And look at this, a factory standard mother-in-law suite. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for that one. Hello and welcome to Halet RV, everybody. My name's Josh the RV Nerd, and when I'm not making terrible dad jokes, I'm out here taking a look at fun things like the 17 JG Wolf Pup. What does JG stand for? Well, I've long felt that it stands for just great. Although, uh, in more point of fact, uh, JG actually stands for some of the initials of the uh, member of the Cherokee team that originally proposed this floor plan. Kind of cool how Cherokee honors their team members that way. This thing right here is, uh, it, it's what 3915 pounds empty weight but it's riding uh on a uh, 5,000 pound axle so we still have uh over a thousand pounds of cargo space available on this which is awesome because with that big super slide and uh, all the storage in that dinette you can actually pack a decent amount of cargo into this one and and i really wonder and i'd love to hear from you folks at home would you look at this exclusively as a bunkhouse because i look at it and i'm like you know if it was just myself alone, I could use that all for storage space. Or if it's just me and the missus, uh, we could maybe take like that top bunk out, convert it almost into like a sort of walk-in closet type space. And because it's a cargo bunkhouse, there's really, I mean, there's a ton of things you could do. Like, uh, I, I think you could probably fit like one of those folding e-bikes up in here. Or if you got a little kid, um, you could probably fit a little kid bike in there, which is a great way to keep them occupied at the campsite. Although my experience uh, when when my daughter was little and we camped is that she'd get on her little bike on her training wheels and she'd take off down the paved parts of the road and I'd end up hoofing it after her. Uh, so may, maybe don't don't bring the kids bikes if, if you want to spend some time in your chair. <laughs> okay, so first thing in here. Uh, ah, spider. Oh, oh. <laughs> wasn't a spider I just felt something brush my ear and I freaked out <laughs> I'm gonna cut that down now with extreme prejudice <laughs> you folks seem to like it so I'm gonna keep doing it we're gonna keep starting right here from the view of uh like this is what it would look like if you're sitting in the dinette this is your seating point of view. And one of the things that it brings to light is the fact that this actually has surprisingly good campsite window coverage between uh, the full viewing window and the door and those two cross breeze windows. And I do call those cross breeze windows because sitting over here in the dinette, we have this gigantic picture window allowing all sorts of light and airflow through the camper. Why am I talking like I'm some weird magician? But uh, regardless, this decor package that they have here, it seems to be pretty trend-setting. Then again, Cherokee's, uh, the Cherokee RV group, I believe at this point, is actually pretty clearly the single number one group, uh, like family of RVs in terms of like total sales volume out there. They've taken over, really. Uh, only a few years ago, they were like fourth or fifth, and they were doing great, and then they just came out swinging, and they have been dominating ever since. Now, you see the TV hook up there above that breeze window. I think TV in this is definitely a secondary concern. But if you're sitting in the dinette or you see where the headboard of the, the bed's positioned, well, you know, that's really not too bad of an angle. And I love the full cross breeze windows right across from that bed. Um, a couple things I want to do. Talk, talk to you about this bed. First of all, x-ray vision. Go! Take a little look down here at the uh, storage under the bed. Notice how it's gas strutted and easy lift. Plus, we have storage above the bed right there. What I want to talk about real quick is the size of the bed and what it could be. Are you like, what? What do you mean what it could be? Okay, so first of all, an interesting thing here, this is a full 60 inch wide bed. Many single axle campers, even the big fancy laminated like Geo Pros and J-Feather Micros, which cost a pretty penny more than this. You could buy almost two of these for one of those. Um, I'm not saying they're equivalent products, of course, but they have 54 inch wide beds. Now, some of those might have an 80 inch long bed. This is 74 inches long. So it's a a true camp queen. Uh, that, that, that phrase doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is you may notice you also have that handy headboard up here. Well, this camper's seven foot wide. If 
you remove that headboard, which is no big deal. There's no like wiring or anything running through it. You notice how the outlets, you got USB plugs and household plugs over here built into the sidewall, which you can do more easily on a stick and tin camper. A inch and a half thick uh, laminated wall, you can't do that. So that's actually a benefit here to the Wolf Pup. If you need a True Queen bed, take out that headboard, or you could uh, request that our team do that for you. And this camper is True Queen capable, which... I don't know, not bad. Would you leave it as is, or would you swap it around? Let me know. Now you may have noticed, you can kind of see a sliver of it right there. There's a little kind of like hidden pocket of storage down there. You gotta kind of squish the mattress back to get to it, but eh, it's there, you know, nice little place to keep stuff out of the way. Up top here, there's a little plug in the ceiling. You're like, well, what is that? It is basically a prep point for an LCI Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, if uh, you, you feel like doing a little bit of uh, mobile data work camping kind of thing. We have a full 13,500 BTU roof air conditioner on this, which will turn this little thing into an ice box if you need it. And that giant fridge in this thing. Uh, Wolf Pup was the first single axle I saw standardized, that 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridge. That thing is, I mean, you could argue oversized, but, you know, I, I've actually had people say, yeah, I get it that this camper doesn't have a pantry. But if I had to, I could always just put a, a dry box of mac and cheese in the fridge. It's not going to hurt anything. You just end up, you know, taking it out of the thing anyway. So, okay, whatever. Uh, pulling that down, you see we've got nightshades all the way through. Uh, that turns into a big sleeper. That is actually, uh, next to the master bed, the largest secondary sleeper in the whole camper. Uh, it's about seven foot long. And I think about 44 inches deep, and it, of course, has those nice, uh, maybe 40 inches deep, because those are 40-inch dinette drawers there. Now... Always trying to be fair. The main deck of the camper is carpetless, which is cool. You can see how the slide-out deck does have a strip of carpet right there. If there's one little ask I'd like to see, since this is the number one area for food and drink, I would like to see that. But, you know, if it, if it were, like, that big of a deal to me, what I would do is I would go get one of those, um, like, office plastic mats for roller chairs I would cut it to size. I would screw the uh, dinette base down right over the top of it. And I'd call it macaroni. That's that's just me. I don't know why I'd call it macaroni because that wouldn't make sense, but that's what I would do. Uh, I think I mentioned it. I'm not sure. All sealed edge, pressed membrane countertops through the RV. And the kitchen over here is minimal, but I think with an outside uh, propane hookup and a uh, uh, outside fridge, I think, you know, they really lean on the exterior of this one to be uh, just as much of the kitchen as the interior. I don't know. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. The um, countertop here, one of the things I like, you see that I, they went with a really big sink in this, but that means that they had to put the, the faucet kind of off center. And I like how they went with that thinner two burner profile stovetop over there because it means that we always have this chunk of counter space available. And all of our cooking, all of our water, it's the furthest away from, like, falling off the countertop. This just, I think that this is one of the best executed small camper, uh, you know, kitchen setups I've ever seen. That being said, it is also, like, I, I don't think there's a way you could do this without triggering someone's OCD. This little slot right here, it feels right to me to have it pointing toward the faucet, but it also feels right to me to have it down but then i feel like that's not as functional and it's it's kind of in the way so then i turn it over here and i do something like that with it and i don't know it still feels weird that it's not exactly lined up with anything and then i take this handy painter's palette right here and i hand it in to, uh to my wife and she knocks me upside the head with it and says stop messing with the sink cover josh and i say <laughs> yes dear because i intend to stay married for a long long time <laughs> Dual single bunks right here. Nothing too special and fancy report there. Although I do want to mention each bunk does have its own little independent light. You see that you have USB plugs there and there. I guess that is actually a pretty cool thing to mention. And another thing, those are actually just 12 volt powered. So you see that green light? We're just running off battery power. We're running off the, the solar battery tending juice pack currently. It's a nice little thing if you are primitive boondock and dry camping. You can sort of keep your phones charged up that way. Oh, and has nothing to do with the bunks, but just while we're looking at the wall, they don't use tape 
where the where the wall panels meet. It's actually a click in place T molded seam and they do the same thing on the ceiling. So that stuff stays in place. Now, if you really go fingernail picking at it up here, yeah, you could pop it out of there. But if you start peeling the tape, it ain't ever gonna get back up there. And considering, especially corners like this, they tend to pull humidity. It would cause that tape to prematurely uh, peel off. This stuff, it's going to stay looking good just like this for years. In our bathroom here, simple, straightforward, no nonsense, nothing over the top. Uh, there's actually surprisingly good room around this toilet. And here's how they accomplish that. By going with a curtain instead of a solid shower wall, it allows you to cheat and use elbow room over that tub. Uh, and it works, frankly, very, very nicely. Uh, the other thing I want to point out here is like, you see up top, we've got a, uh, a simple uh, bath fan. Now, when you go to the black label version, that upgrades to a larger like XL fan. Here in the standard series, you just get a standard fan, but that's an that's an easy one-off upgrade. If the only thing you you want from the black label package is the bigger fan back here, oh, well, you can you can get just a bigger fan here and end up saving a truckload of money. I think though, there's like a roof rafter in the way. I don't think they're able to move this over here. And if they are able and they haven't done it, I feel that's an oversight. And here's why I say it. Here's what our headroom looks like in the shower when you're my height at like 6'3". It's a little restrictive. Now, I'm not getting into this little camper because I expect to have eight foot ceilings. I can deal with it. I just kind of want you folks to be aware. Now they do a kind of a crafty thing over here. In the shower, they actually have a little corner sink, which it maybe sometimes looks a little intrusive to people. I'm telling you, when you're standing in the shower though, it's not in your way. And frankly, it actually works as like a really handy sort of like shampoo and conditioner and body wash bucket. And backing up a step, closing up the slide, checking out the travel access for road mode. Remember that this floor plan, this camper, the body is only seven foot wide. So you have a little extra width to play with, but that is a pretty deep slide. So, you know, it could it could pop out of a parking spot. That nice, deep, true U dinette, one of the hiccups is it does get a little bossy in here. Now, I gotta stand on my toes and I gotta get my butt up over the hump. But if I do the sideways travel trailer two-step butt scoop boogie, I can get back to the bunks, to the fridge, and the bathroom. And I hope you appreciate the way we take the extra time to kind of show you that stuff. Now, I thought I'd expand on that a little bit. I got a bit of a chubby gut, but I got a skinny butt, and I got chicken legs. I can squeeze my way through that space. If you're a bit bigger person, that might not work. And the reason I want to say this, someone's going to go, yeah, but couldn't you just bump the slide out a few inches? You don't want to do that with this slide. I, I want to make sure when you're done watching our videos, like you're getting your second camera the first time and making sure that you proactively don't screw things up. That's the kind of information I want to give you here. This is a Schwintech slide system. It is very lightweight. It's, it's a brilliant system for a lot of things, but it is not designed to be only open and closed partially because you throw off the, uh, the way the motors talk to one another because there's multiple motors working in concert together right here. This slide system, you want to open it all the way and close it all the way. You don't want to keep doing it halfway through. So that is one of those kind of, it might be a problem for some people things. And if it's going to be a problem, I would rather we just address that, get it out of the way right now. And let's find you something else that might work. I think for a lot of people though, when you're looking at a big slide and a small camper, you know that you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul and something's got to give, but I don't think they gave up totally. And so much more than just exceptionally good looks on this thing. Right up front, you've got a really cool feature here. Now, sometimes these run into a shortage phase, so sometimes you end up with a power jack, but that ain't bad. But take a look at the right side of your screen. This is the Cherokee Quick Jack. On the standard series Wolf Pups right here, basically you take the little hex nut adapter that you would use to uh, operate your four corner stabilizer jacks on this, which by the way, it has all four corners, not just the rears. And uh, there you go. Uh, in what, eight seconds up and down, you can operate the, uh, the tongue jack on this thing. I really like that thing. I like that thing a lot. And in case you're curious, as you saw right there, yep, the handle can spin without hitting the propane bottle. Now, it's not a full pass-through, 
but it's also not a small compartment. And remember, you can get to this area uh, by lifting the bed if need be as well. So it's never really difficult to, uh, to access. Uh, as we back up here, just below that big door, uh, that baggage door, there's a propane quick connect, or as I like to call it, the cooker hooker. And there's a lot of people who love the idea of that not being located under the awning, so you don't necessarily like, smoke everybody out of the awning space. This RV doesn't have the biggest awning, because if you notice, you got the cargo door in the back, you've got the window in the front. I think they did the best they could. And Man, the sunshine is blessing us today. Look at the look of this thing. And, and you know, I'm gonna give Cherokee some credit. You notice how up top they have that white AC shroud? That's gonna help that air conditioner operate a little bit more efficiently. A black AC shroud in a small camper like this is not gonna break the bank, but every little bit counts, you know? They, they you could argue, sacrifice just a measure of fashion for an enhanced level of function there. Where you're getting that fashion back though is that gorgeous uh, tempered glass front door and you see the wolf pup emblazoning down there. And they call this the pup kitchen. So we got a gas grill quick connect. We got dad's medicine cabinet out here for the barley water and uh, you know, that kind of thing. Or what did I say? Bottled water and barley pop. I've been screwing that up left and right all year. I can't even keep my own stupid nerdism straight anymore. But the fact that that flips down drawbridge style is something I've always enjoyed because it makes a perfect little drink station, frankly. <laughs> Outside TV hookups and speakers to the left of that. And then we come over here to the, uh, the I don't know, big cargo bunkhouse. That bunk flips up and latches out of the way, and it gives you just this nice big loading space. Whether, like I said, it's going to be, uh, you know, like, lawn games or, or just totes for outside storage or whatever the case may be, that is uh, a, a nice chunk of flex space right there. And in case you're curious about security, it does have a deadbolt door, same as your main entry door. This is actually, what I like about this, there you go, it's a, 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 a like friction hinge door, so I really have to chuck that to get it to slam. But notice how both doors, they have the same front on them. There's just such a nice cohesion in the look of this. I think stick and tin campers often get kind of a bad rap for like not always looking good. I don't think that's the case in the Cherokee family. Actually, I think their look has become so popular in, in such demand. You see it copied all over the place in the industry anymore. Cherokee went to this color scheme right here in like the next two years, everybody and their brother copied it. Cargo rack on the back with a spare tire has about a 200 pound capacity before the tire. So kind of keep that in mind right there. Uh, I, the uh, spare tire, it's like some seasons it's optional, some it's not. Either way, whatever the case may be, we're gonna make sure you got a spare tire. And Cherokee has made sure you have an extra tail light and a backup camera. Some awesome safety features there from them. Now you see this one light over here. I left that on, turned everything else off because it's on its own separate switch. It's a handy little dump station courtesy light. So in the evening hours or in the early morning, uh, if you see that you know, you're taking a shower and the water's not going down the drain, you gotta drain stuff out, you got an easy way to do it. You can see everything. And this little camper is slide awning ready. That is unbelievably uncommon in little campers. Very few single axle trailers are actually slide awning prepped. You may also notice uh, right up next to that gas and electric and auto ignition and fast recharge water heater, we have a full hot cold outside utility shower. Pretty sweet. Now quick rundown of the construction of this. What I like about Wolf Pups is how their construction mirrors that of their big brother Gray Wolf or full Cherokee. We, have, we start with a 3 8 uh, OSB roof deck that is fully walkable. We have average of 16-inch uh, on center wall and roof studs. Average 12-inch on center floor studs with a 5 8 tongue and groove floor decking. That construction outline I just gave right there pretty much uh, is almost exactly the same as, say, like a Jayco, a Catalina, a Wildwood, and obviously these Cherokees here. But that's what I like, the fact that they've stayed with their consistent bigger trailer construction here on a smaller package. Now that roof is fully walkable, they just don't happen to offer ladders at this time. So thank you very much for taking some time to join us today. Leave me a couple notes, let me know what you think about it, what you like, what you'd like to see different. You'd be surprised how much of that feedback does make it back to the factory. I also want to make a note uh, to mention that they do offer this model in both the standard series that we're looking at today as well as that gorgeous high gloss black label. So if you like the idea of that fiberglass, we got it here. Another thing, we have the same floor plan um, in an Asdell laminated seven and a half foot wide camper called the Coachman Apex Nano, uh, which is the 194 BHS. So whether you're looking for a common stick and tin, uh, a fancy Asdell laminated, or something in between, we got you covered at Halet RV. 
and we do it all without hidden dealer fees, so you're welcome for the convenience. <laughs> Sorry for the convenience, I don't know, whatever. Either way, give us a call when you're ready, and we'd love to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Bye.